So the other night, uh, I, me and some other people were talking about game systems uh, and Palladium books. And so this video is going to be about Palladium books, uh, the system, and things that I would do different. And I know not everybody agrees. <coughs> so um, one of the things that me and a friend were talking about was which direction we would go with it. Uh, I said you should probably pick the staples of the system. Like, obviously, Palladium Books covers a wide variety of genres from fantasy to, to modern day to supers, post-apocalyptic. And there's variations to things throughout those, right? But at its core, it's an active defense system. It's percentile skills. It's... Mega damage, if you're talking about rifts, and it's class based. Like those are the four key things that I I would say truly define what Palladium is right now. And the so identifying the things that it is, then you kind of take what are the biggest complaints about the system? What are the the barriers of entry? The things that keep people from playing Palladium books. So for me, you got to like. Tone it down to what's good for beginners, right? Um, so that you can get new people into your game. Also looking at trends in the industry, like you're looking at things like 5th edition, right? 5th edition is the biggest and still the fastest growing system. And it's a simpler system. Um, that doesn't mean you have to like make it like that or anything. But you need to simplify the system. Pathfinder said they were going to do that with 2nd edition. It sounds like a lot of people weren't satisfied with what came out from what I've heard. And it wasn't simplified enough. So, again, people think it's still too much like 1st edition. Um, you know, so they've kind of splintered their fan base. So, with Palladium, my take is you simplify it. The other person I was talking to, they didn't want to do that. They wanted to maintain its complexity. Um, my argument with that was that if you're going to maintain the complexity, all you're going to do is split the current fan base. You're going to have, just hypothetically, say you have 100,000 fans. I don't know how many they have, but say you have 100,000 fans, and you make a system that is basically the same thing with just a couple revisions. Now, of those 100,000 fans, you might have 50,000 that play the new one and 50,000 that play the old one, right? My goal is that Say you have 100,000 fans, you might split that 50-50, but you're also going to bring new people from outside. And hopefully that would be more than the 50,000 that you've lost. And that's what I think Palladium should be trying to do. In my opinion, that's the only way that 10, 20 years from now, Palladium Books will still be its own company in my mind. You know, and that's, at that point, it's probably been sold to somebody, um, Maybe it's been absorbed by a bigger company. I don't know. I don't know why a company would do that unless they really liked the idea of the Rift setting, personally. Um, but I could see someone who loves Palladium as it is now and buying it and, you know, doing stuff. So anyways, when I was talking about simplifying it, I thought, you know, obviously you could keep the percentiles for skills. But... The way that skills are selected has to be done away with, in my opinion. Simplify the skills so you can fit all the skills on one page. Um, and make them just basic skills. Now, if you have somebody who's specialized in something. So you might have a basic skill of uh, just maybe your guy's got a military skill. And that's it. It's just military, right? That could mean basically anything. But to do something advanced, you need a specific trait. So maybe your military background is demolitions, we'll say. Because I know there's a lot of different demolition skills in the book uh, right now. So say he's like a demolition specialist. Uh, so now he's got that trait. Well, that trait will allow him to do more advanced things other than like, um, I don't know. What would a basic military skill do? Might let you know like, insignias and ranks and etiquette and maybe basic tactics of enemies that are just like infantry 
Uh, it might give you an understanding of what to look for with explosives, but not how to um, diffuse them per se. But an advanced demolitions guy could diffuse that. Um, you know, so it's kind of like a trait might be something similar to in 5th edition how they use like uh, tool proficiencies. So you can't pick a lock without thief pick thief tools or whatever, lock picking tools. So that's kind of what a trait would be. It'd be kind of like your thing. Now you still might need a tool with it or whatever too, but point is, is you would have the knowledge to do it. Um, and you might be able to improvise things based on what you have. Uh, same thing with like piloting. Like a pilot would, skill would not be a basic skill. It would only be advanced. So if you had somebody who was a pilot background, now they could fly planes. But your typical character would not tend to have that. Only your very specialized characters would. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, like in 5th edition you have these backgrounds and it's things like charlatan and da -da -da. It doesn't mean your backgrounds, you have to be a pilot to be able to do that. You might get your skills from maybe your mechanic. Well, maybe your, your background of mechanic also gives you a piloting skill of some sort. Or you could choose something else. But the idea is you would choose different things rather than being told, this is your background, so this is what you have. You get like a couple options, a couple traits you can pick. So it's more like, you know, a, a thing that you add on top of your character that makes them more special. Um, it simplifies the skill system. Right now, if I'm making a character in Palladium, the thing that takes the longest is picking skills usually. And you get an arb arbitrary percentage and things like that. What I'm proposing will simplify it because now instead of choosing 20 different skills, you're going to say your background is a thief, right? You used to be a thief. Uh, now, what does a thief do? That could have been armed robbery. So maybe it's less like lock picking and sleight of hand. Maybe it's more like grunt, like I'm going to come in with guns blazing kind of thing. So you could choose like some gun proficient, a, a gun proficiency or whatever, um, gun proficiency trait, handgun proficiency trait, whatever. You could choose uh, maybe maybe driving is a trait as a thief because you need to get away, so you're really good at that. Maybe it's explosives because hey, you need to blow up lock like vaults and stuff. It could be a lot of different things in there that you choose, but you're only allowed to choose like two or three, right? So you get these three, two or three proficiencies. You might get some thing, other things from your background, but right now that's kind of what I'm thinking for backgrounds. So I think that would make it quicker. Now classes would also give you some proficiencies. Um, now the classes would be dependent, both classes and backgrounds would be dependent on your setting. Like if you're playing Palladium Fantasy, we'll say, your setting and your backgrounds and your classes are based on that. If you're playing a supers game, again, it would be based on that. And if you're playing post-apocalyptic, it's gonna be a whole different you know, list of classes and backgrounds. Um, the one thing that people talked, or that we were talking about in there is hand-to-hand -hand styles. So hand-to-hand -hand right now is when you level up, that's actually where you improve things. Um, but it's all combat stuff, you know, things like that. So I thought your hand-to-hand -hand styles could come from your class and background. Like you get an option to select a hand-to-hand -hand from that. But unlike in Palladium where if you level up, you look at a chart for your hand-to-hand -hand style, with this, it just grants you a couple different abilities. Not every level, but like maybe at fourth level, you add a D4 to your damage with punching. Maybe at, or maybe you add one to your damage for punching. Uh, maybe you at level six you get to add um, a grab like some kind of a grapple move to disarm somebody or something I don't know but you, you see what I'm saying like you would get different abilities or maybe a an, uh, a bump to one of your your actions or stats right already rather than um, the way it is right now where it's like you Every single time you level, you get a new bonus or a new attack or a new this or a new that. Uh, I think just maybe every once in a while. And, and I wouldn't even 
dabble too much with extra attacks. It would just be a single attack every round. Um, that's probably how I would do it. I'd probably do a single attack, a uh, single reaction, movement speed, and that's that. Now, the single attack can be a flurry, you know, a combination. But again, that would come from a hand-to-hand -hand thing. So if it's a flurry, though, rather than roll multiple times, you're probably going to roll once to hit. Again, because I want a quicker game. That's how I want it. Um, but maybe you can roll the three attacks and the, the boxing combination, you know, whatever. Um, the other thing I would change is I still like the active defense. So you get one reaction is the way I'm seeing it. Uh, and again, that would be a trained thing. If you're not trained, it, it will be your regular action. So you could give up your action to do a parry or a dodge once. <clears throat> um, dodge would be for all range things, not for anything up close. A pair would be in melee distance. You know, hand to hand, up up close. Um, and I think this would make the system a lot more digestible for people. Uh, I, I hate the fact that like you start off with zero attacks per round unless you have like I think basic, you automatically start with one attack per round. But then if you're like an expert, it's like two or something. I don't know. It's a lot of attacks, and then it doesn't make sense with how they do the speed and how it's not that you get to do all your attacks at once. It's like you take turns with each attack until you're out of attacks. Uh, so, again, Palladium with that, it, I, I don't like how it is. And I know like people do the, the house rule grid of 15 by 15. And so, like, if you have four attacks, you divide 15 by four, and that's how many, or that's when you do your attacks, and so on and so forth. Uh, and that fixes the speed issue, because the more attacks you have, the less distance you can move per attack. Um, and so then, like, people are like, well, I only got to move, like, four feet. <laughs> but my speed is way better than their speed, so this is stupid. Like, uh, yeah, so again, it's just, it's not something that people tend to like. Or you could just disregard... And just say, hey, if your speed is this, that's how far you can run every attack. That'd be another way to fix that. Um, but yeah, so anyways, so again, keep the active defense. Now, the leveling would still be tied to like your class, I would say. And your class would give you, again, different abilities, different options as you level. Uh, I don't like in games where when you level, it, you're just told, this is what you get at this level. And you don't get an option about anything about it. The options, I think, are what make characters unique. And the more options you have, the more unique you can be from others. Um, that's kind of my gripe with 5th edition is that, you know, most fighters feel the same as other fighters. Um, whereas if you had op more options, you know, obviously you can choose a fighting style. Okay, now you're splintering off fighters into like four different types, right? But ultimately there's not enough options in my opinion. So... One of the things I like about Palladium and their, their supers game, at least, is there's a ton of options. Uh, the way you build your characters, you get a lot of different things about them, and I like that. But with all that, sometimes you get some rules and balance issues. Now, I'm not too worried about balance, uh, personally, and I think that's because I grew up on Palladium books. But I can understand why a lot of people want it. So I still think you need to strive for balance. And there's a lot of ways you can do this still. Again, make things weaker at low levels and make them stronger at higher levels. And so if you want something that feels more powerful, just say, hey guys, we're playing a level 15 part, a game. Level 15 game. And uh, so make your characters like that. And with it, you're like, oh, that's going to take forever to make because you've got all these options. But maybe these options sometimes had prerequisites. So if you take this option at level 15, it gets rid of your level five option that you took because it trumps it. So nothing, so it doesn't stack. It just takes the place of that. So now you're just like, okay, I'm making a level 15 character. So I would have had to take this there. Boom, 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 boom. You know, you can still try to simplify it and make it a quick system to build characters. Um, you know, like Superman would probably be like a level 20 character. Whereas Batman might be a level 5 character. And Spider-Man might be a level 3 character. You know, just spitballing, you know, without putting...
putting a lot of thought into that. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm thinking there, right? Um, you know, and obviously when, when you're talking about riffs, things can get kind of crazy with like Glitter Boys and things like that. So you've got Glitter Boys are extremely powerful, but then you have things like just your generic soldier or Mars character in Savage Rifts or uh, you might have your Vagabonds, you know, and things like that. Hmm. Very different on the spectrum when you're comparing a Glitter Boy to that, both in damage, in everything. So how do you balance it? Well, you got to, like, provide weaknesses. So you need to really focus. What is a Glitter Boy's weakness going to be? Maybe they're weak against um, small things within hand to hand but you get the vibro blade right that are i think built into their machines or no they can they can wield it with a hand and you know whatever um mdc was something we talked about and i like how savage rifts did the property uh i don't remember what they called it but i would just call it mega you know mega armor and so then like what does it take to bypass mega armor well you need a mega weapon um no matter what, though, that mega weapon is going to deal the same damage to a non-mega character, I would say. And I'm only doing that, again, for balance. Um, you know, but a cannon, you know, like a tank cannon, should still do a ton of damage. No matter what, it should just get the opportunity to bypass mega armor. Um, so it should kill a lot of stuff, right? Your glitter boy might have mega armor, right? But it also should have a little bit more hit points, too. It's beefier. Your Vagabond should not be considered mega, right? So the cannon would kill him. <laughs> he also is just a normal person, so probably doesn't have as many hit points. Uh, so I like that. Um, so that's probably what I would do there uh, for the sake of balance. You can also add things to like some of the bigger weapons, like a reload time um, and things like that. So... Uh, Th those are just some of my ideas for what I would do with Palladium. Again, I'd simplify it to make it simpler with less... Si I, I don't like situational rules anymore. I've started to get away from that. Um, and I like either just doing... Like, 5th edition has advantage, right? Advantage, disadvantage. And it's easy because it's it's the same. Like, it's across almost everything. That's a simple thing to apply. So if you're going to do a modifier instead of advantage and disadvantage per se, then give them the same number for all of it, whether it's a plus three or a negative three, but make it the same for everything, not just a one on some things, a two on others, a three on other. you know, like that's when things get kind of muddy. So you got to make it the same across the board or something I'm kind of playing with is like in... 5th edition, you get advantage or disadvantage situationally. Maybe you take something like the inspiration mechanic instead. So if somebody has advantage, you grant them a hero point. They could choose to use it then, or they could bank it and use it later. I also like the idea of being able to bank hero points in general, or inspiration in general, because um, then it's going to be used more, and things like that. So I like that idea. Um... And so that's right now what I'm kind of playing with. And, and I'm putting some stuff on paper, um, coming up with some different ideas that I think would be fun. Um, it'll never be a Palladium system. I, I, I There's no doubt in my mind. I don't see this ever being Palladium. I'll, who knows? Maybe I'll put it out as my own thing someday. Um, and we'll see what happens with it. But um, maybe I'll get some play testers and check it out through my Discord with some, some people who want to play. Um, speaking of Discord, if you want to join my Discord, I highly encourage it. We've got a great group of people over there. Uh, we're talking every day about RPGs, just life in general. Um, we've got a section if you're looking for players, you can join for that. If you're a content producer, uh, we have a section for you to discuss, you know, things about how to grow your channel or how to use your software and things like that. So if you want to jump on over there and start using that, feel free. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to end the video there. Uh, if you've got ideas for how you would improve Palladium books or if any of these ideas sound interesting, let me know. 
Uh, this was Master of the Game. I am Juice. Game on.